Hi and welcome to the channel. It is a cold, crisp morning here in North Carolina. It's the middle of April here. And April is one of the toughest months to be bird photographer. And the reason for that is the winter birds have migrated to their breeding grounds up north. The tropical birds haven't arrived here in North Carolina. The resident birds are nesting, so there's a lot less activity. That and the fact that we've had a major cold front come through this area here has really affected the bird activity. Now, because of the YouTube algorithm, I still have to make a video every week. Now, one thing I wanna to say to you all is that I really enjoy your comments. I read every one of them and I respond to them all. So, I, I would encourage you guys to leave your comments below. It's something that I really enjoy. One of the reasons I started this channel was to have communications with people in the birding community. And um, I think since COVID and all these things have happened, I feel like the birding community is kind of like kind of drifted apart and I really think that having a channel like this kind of egomaniac I'm gonna bring the community birding community back together but I think that you know this is one way to bring the birding community together so if you're a bird photographer please leave some comments below um, I think other bird photographers would like to read them and I think in encouraging a conversation here this is a real positive environment to uh, be in and remember we're all being positive about stuff but I'm going to talk about four things that I see all the time that I think people make mistakes people make that really are hurting them and it's simple things that you can do to be a better photographer. So come along and enjoy this adventure. Four mistakes that I see out when I'm birding all the time are one, People do not have the hood of their lens on their lens. They um, don't have it on there. And this does a lot of things for you. First of all, it physically protects the optic of your lens from strikes. So if, um, so if something was to strike or come at your lens, at least this will offer some protection. The other thing to, too is it protects your optic from rain and snow from hitting the end of your lens, which is very, very important when you're, especially a wildlife photographer you generally don't for take pictures only when the weather's nice it also protects light from striking the end of your optic and creating weird effects on the on your picture so this is very important to have now if you're not happy with the hood on the end of your camera there are several options as a matter of fact on Amazon you can buy a cloth uh, hood which will really help your hood um, the second thing I think I see a lot of people have trouble with is that my camera is heavy. So they're, it's hard for them to hold up. So they're doing this kind of like, you know, they got their camera on a strap, they have it hanging down, they're doing one of these things here all the time. The problem with that is that you're going to miss photos. The other thing too that's going to happen is that there's going to be camera movement in your picture. So when you're looking through your pictures, you're actually struggling or shaking your camera. Now, camera stabilization will definitely help with some of that, but having a camera on a tripod or a monopod will definitely help you a lot more. And this is something that you can easily have. A monopod is incredibly easy to use. I use a tripod, but this one here, this tripod can be converted into a monopod very easily. And it's something that I believe in. Um, the situations I really like this is, is if I'm in a situation, I'm waiting for a bird to do something, and I'm just standing there waiting. If I'm hand holding the camera, I can't hold this camera very stable for very long. But having it on this tripod, I could literally wait all day for that bird to move. And it really helped you a lot. It's easy to have. Um, now, there are certain situations where a tripod wouldn't be very useful. If you're walking 15 miles into the woods and carrying a tripod with you, that might be a little bit difficult. Um, the third thing that I see a lot of people do is shoot an automatic. Take control of this machine here. Do not shoot an automatic. Um, I am actually doing a class uh, next month on the 14th uh, on how to uh, basic bird photography. If you're in Alamance County in North Carolina or near it, consider going to my website and looking at it. But you need to take control of this. If you're not near me and can't take my class, go online and buy a book about your um, about your camera. There are a lot of good books out there that are written in plain English that shows you how to take control of your camera. And the last thing I think a lot of people 
a lot of bird photographers don't have are binoculars. And I would say this is probably one of the biggest things I see, especially with new bird photographers. And to tell you the truth, I have made all these mistakes. <laughs> Um, is not to have binoculars. Um, when I first got into bird photography, I said, I got a $2,000 piece of glass here. Why do I need to have a pair of binoculars too? But a pair of binoculars are great when you're looking in the bushes for something. They get you on there, they're easy to use. Um, um, they're out of your way if you're using one of these holsters like this here that really keep it out of your way. They're light, they're easy to carry. Um, and there's something that really helps your bird photography. And this is, these are four mistakes I think I see almost every time I go out birding and run into a group of birders that people aren't doing. And I think if you did these four things that they would help you become a better bird photographer. And I say that, you know, the first step to becoming a good bird photographer is to realize where you're making mistakes. So anyways, I'm hoping this video helped you. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to this channel because that really helps us in the YouTube world. Become a Patreon supporter. Your support allows us to keep doing this. My name is Sean Leahy. I want to thank you for watching.